Hello and welcome to Stories from India. This is a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I am your host Narad Muni and I'm a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I'm a traveling musician. and a storyteller so the way i'm doing my job is by podcast in this episode we are going back into the ramayan we'll continue the story of hanuman in lanka we'll see what happens when hanuman faces off with ravan a showdown that ends up being rather costly for lanka If you haven't heard previous Ramayan episodes that is okay because I'll be doing a recap but if you do get a chance I recommend that you check out those earlier episodes these are linked in the show notes The Ramayan is one of two major epics in Indian mythology the other being the Mahabharat which we have also covered on this show The story of the Ramayan begins with Ram, the crown prince of Ayodhya. Ram was denied the opportunity to become king. His stepmother, Kaikeyi, pressured her husband, Ram's father, into sending Ram into exile for 14 years. Ram did not go alone. Sita, his wife, and Lakshman his brother went along i should mention here that ram was an avatar of vishnu one of the holy trinity in indian mythology vishnu is the preserver of the universe creating a kind of balance between brahma the creator and shiva the destroyer a bit of a shameless plug here but brahma is also my dad Anyway, Ram, Lakshman and Sita left Ayodhya and spent years moving from one forest to another. For this trio, life was sometimes exciting, but mostly exhausting, because they had one challenge after another to deal with. There was always a demon or a demoness looking to eat them. Ram Lakshman and Sita managed to fight off all such challenges except Ravan. Ravan was the ruler of Lanka and he was the mega villain of this epic. If you want a pop culture analogy, take Voldemort from Harry Potter but with 10 heads. So 10 times as evil. But also thankfully without 10 times as many horcruxes ravan caused a distraction for ram and lakshman and abducted sita in their absence trying to follow clues here and there ram and lakshman searched for sita they got help from the vanars a kingdom of monkeys including sugriv their king and hanuman who was Sugriv's advisor and right-hand warner Hanuman located Sita in Lanka because he was the only warner with superpowers to cross an ocean Hanuman's trip to Lanka ended up being a solo trip In Lanka Hanuman found Sita in Ravan's garden he met her and verified her identity But when he suggested that he could carry her back to Ram she refused she insisted that Ram should himself make the trip to Lanka defeat Ravan and take her back in full honor we left the last episode on a cliffhanger when Ravan's soldiers discovered and surrounded Hanuman after they found him in the garden uprooting massive trees so let's continue the story shortly after this in ravan's court 
Ravan was seated on a huge throne. The size of the throne wasn't just because he was a huge person. No. The throne needed to be wide enough to accommodate Ravan's 10 heads. There was an unpleasant episode once when the throne was narrower. And one of the palace maids thought that it was a good idea to put flower vases all around the throne. Ravan's first and 10th heads had bumped into those vases and had not reacted well. Needless to say, that palace maid no longer had a job. She was lucky to have kept her head. One could say she was being let off easy. Ravan usually reserved the worst for people he was displeased with. And this morning, he was in an especially nasty mood. Because he had been doing some thinking. Sita was still not ready to marry him. He had done a lot for her already, hadn't he? He had brought her out of a tiny little hut in a forest into his own palace. It was true that he was treating her like a prisoner, but he had explained to her that once she was his queen, she could do whatever she pleased. He even promised her a golden deer. something her husband ram was unable to fetch for her so was it too much to ask if he wanted to marry her but no this high and mighty princess of ayodhya refused he tried telling her that he would make it legal but she wouldn't even consider divorcing ram that's what she said He was frustrated by this lack of progress and even his advisers were out of ideas well except vibhishan his brother vibhishan had the most laughable idea he suggested returning sita to ram and apologizing imagine that ravan almost the lord of the universe apologize to someone a mere human i mean at his moment of triumph would you have expected lord voldemort to give up his wand and apologize to harry potter for all the pain he had caused him ridiculous so ravan was in a sour mood when his guards announced that they had captured an intruder in his garden He signaled his permission and they brought in Hanuman tightly bound in ropes Upon seeing the vanar Ravan was suddenly cautious Wali is that you but we made peace Wali was the only creature who had defeated Ravan so far so you can understand Ravan being anxious No, I am not Wali. Hanuman had taken offense. Are you saying to your 10 racist pairs of eyes all of us vanars look alike? To that Ravan replied more in disgust with his own initial reaction than with Hanuman's appearance. You're just a monkey. Guards, must you bring every little problem like this to me? Can't you deal with this monkey yourself? Go sell him to a zoo or a circus or something. Just get him out of here. The guards did not move. Finally, one of them sheepishly admitted, "Your Highness, we do not have any control over him. Yes, we have bound him with ropes, but he is the one who pulled us here by force." not the other way around we can't seem to make him do anything ravan paused and then stared at hanuman what's your game monkey why did you want to see me hanuman stared back and said i'm not playing a game here 
I just wanted to see what a big coward you are. But now that I'm here, maybe I'll go easy on you. I'll accept your unconditional surrender and apology if you also deliver Sita back where you kidnapped her from. There was a sudden hush all over the court. No one had ever dared insult Ravan like this before. When the leader of the opposition had very indirectly critiqued Ravan's governance, Ravan had dropped an entire mountain on him. People shuffled their feet, trying to step back further from Hanuman to get out quickly from the blast radius when Ravan did something nasty. But Ravan didn't do that. It started with head number seven, who chuckled at Hanuman's remark. Then heads six, five and three joined in. And finally, all heads were laughing, as if Hanuman had made a big joke. Hesitatingly at first, Ravan's courtiers joined in the laughter, when they realized Ravan really was amused. Oh, ho, ho, I haven't laughed like this in years. You are an amusing little monkey. I am thinking of keeping you as my pet. Hanuman was rather offended, but he counted to ten and let it pass. He could crush this Ravan guy. He was confident of that. Hanuman could simply supersize himself and step on him. Or maybe all he had to do was to put his little pinky on either of Ravan's extreme heads. The guy would simply topple due to imbalance. So many options, but it was a shame that he couldn't do any of that. No, not because of the ropes binding him. It was because he must save Ravan for Ram. Sita had practically ordered it. Ram himself would have to come here and avenge the insult. Hanuman sighed. He opened his mouth to say that he had really tried. If Ravan was being pig-headed in all of his ten heads, then on his own ten heads be it. But he stopped, because one of Ravan's advisors spoke up. He suggested that Ravan make an example of this Vanar, parade him in the streets of Lanka and let the citizens pelt him with stones. That's not a bad idea at all, Ravan replied. It'll be good for the morale of the citizens. It's been a while since we had a good stoning. And we can charge a premium for front row participants. He didn't mention it, but he also owned the quarry that supplied hand-sized stones for just such events. It was a good way to make some money off of this insolent monkey. Let's make it more thrilling, said another minister. I've often felt that there are gaps between when the stones hit the prisoners. And to close those gaps, we can set this monkey on fire so that he is continuously hurting. I like how your wicked little mind thinks, Ravan said gleefully. All right, let's set the monkey on fire. But it should burn him slowly. So start with his tail. Hanuman, during this time, had been about to clear his throat and interrupt that he hated to break up the party, but he was going to leave now. But he stopped himself. Tail on fire, huh? That was perfect. It was even better than what he had in mind. And in case you're wondering, no. Hanuman didn't simply lose his mind. He just had an idea. 
and part of it was to do with one of his many superpowers. Oh dear, not fire, he said, with just enough mock concern in his voice to assure the court that they had picked the right punishment. The guards quickly wrapped Hanuman's tail in an oilcloth. They led Hanuman to the palace gates. Announcements had quickly gone out all over the city. Some Lankan citizens were more thrilled about the impromptu holiday they got from work than the actual stoning. But everyone was there, ready, at the palace gates. They had to be. When Ravan wished for the city to enjoy an event like this, they enjoyed it, whether they liked it or not. When everyone was ready, the palace gates were finally opened. And simultaneously, a guard lit fire to the oilcloth on Hanuman's tail. It caught fire quickly, and people jumped up and down in delight when they saw Hanuman's tail burning. But then, they stopped almost immediately, because something was wrong here. Hanuman wasn't crying out in pain. He was actually smiling. What kind of a sick monkey was he to enjoy being burnt? They didn't know, because they hadn't heard episode 25 of the show, where I described how Hanuman had acquired the superpower of being impervious to fire. It was a gift from Agni, the god of fire himself. Using one of his other superpowers, Hanuman quickly grew in size. And when he did, the ropes binding him broke. With a well-executed leap, he was suddenly on a rooftop. This happened so quickly, none of the citizens even got a chance to toss a stone in his direction. Meanwhile, Hanuman was executing his plan quickly. He used his tail to set fire to the house he was on. He leaped to another rooftop, set fire to that one, and then another, and so on. But Hanuman wasn't a monster. He made enough noise and caused enough commotion to give every child and senior citizen a chance to escape out of their home before it burned down. He was aiming for destruction of property, not loss of life. This destruction alone would put some economic pressure on the kingdom. That would buy them some time until Ram and Lakshman could come to Lanka. Hanuman was very fast. He managed to set fire to most of the city before the firefighters in their fire chariots could even begin operations. Hanuman was also careful not to set the palace garden on fire. He knew that Sita was there so he kept a little distance from there. Hanuman didn't stop and admire his work. He needed to rush back to Ram and Lakshman with the good news. They would be happy to know that Sita was okay and unharmed physically. He leapt across the ocean, flying faster than he had ever before. And even though the fire didn't bother him, he did douse it out in the ocean to avoid accidentally burning down something. During his flight to Lanka, he had encountered one challenge after another, but the flight back was completely uneventful. Or maybe he was just going back a lot faster now and didn't even notice it when someone attempted to interrupt his journey. Back in Kishkinda, in the Vanar kingdom ruled by Sugriv, Ram and Lakshman anxiously waited for news of Hanuman. The last thing they had heard had been from Jambavan, the bear, and other members of Hanuman's search party. 
that group had all gone south and hanuman had what seemed a very credible lead but since then there was only radio silence ram and lakshman contemplated going south proactively so as to be closer to sita if it turned out that was indeed the direction she had been taken in but there was a risk as well they knew sugriv had complete faith in hanuman but what if hanuman was just wrong then they'd waste more time getting back to kishkinda sugriv sat with the ayodhya brothers don't worry he told them as he peeled a banana and ate it hanuman will bring some news soon here have a banana it's from my own private garden and only the best fruits are grown there we reserve this fruit only for vips but i'll make an exception for you lakshman was quite visibly frustrated with the lack of news he was going to graphically describe what sugriv could do with the exclusive fruit from his exclusive garden but luckily there was an interruption a vanar guard quickly came and addressed the vanar king your highness hanuman has let all the vanars into your private garden they are eating up all the fruit sugriv's face turned a deep red shade but ram pointed out what was in fact a reasonable explanation this is quite unlike hanuman from what i've heard of him i suspect he has brought good news and is giving the vanars a treat the three of them rushed to the garden where they saw hanuman being carried by the other vanars like a hero hanuman stepped right up and handed something to ram it was a hair ornament that sita had given to him as proof that she had indeed met him ram recognized it immediately and in that moment he was suddenly filled with hope until just a few minutes ago he had been dreading any kind of news but now he knew that it was all going to be okay sita was alive and she was unharmed judging by hanuman's smile all ram had to do was to go to her and bring her back and nothing absolutely nothing was going to stop him from getting her back that's it for this time a few notes valmiki was the author of the ramayan we covered his origin story in episode 6 fish highwayman the ramayan kicks off in episode 7 kingdom by horse episode 15 rishi versus rishi uncivil war and episode 16 16 flags are about ram and lakshman's encounter with vishwamitra a flashback to dashrath's past is in episode 24 promises made hearts broken ram lakshman and sita begin their exile in episode 30 and continue it in episode 41 and episode 64 where we saw the first kidnapping of sita they encountered Shurpanakha in episode 78 Episode 101 explained how Ravan engineered a diversion so he could abduct Sita In episode 112 Ram and Lakshman got their first hint of what could have happened to Sita and they were also told that Sugriv could help them In episode 118 Ram and Lakshman learned more about Sugriv and Vali's rivalry and in episode 125 ram and lakshman helped make sugriv the king of the vanars hanuman met a vulture sampati in episode 132 and then crossed the ocean in episode 142 
Sugriv's brother, Wali, was also the character of the week in episode 21. Hanuman's origin story and explanation of his superpowers is in episode 25, Up, Up and Away. Episode 55, Saturnine, is about an encounter between Shani and Ravan. And that story is actually set about the same time as the events in today's episode. We talked about Ram and Lakshman's sister, Shanta, in episode 92. Jambavan, Jatayu and Sampati were parts of characters of the week sections during episode 2 and 11. In the next episode, we'll do a story from the Brihat Katha. The Brihat Katha are a series of stories that no longer exist, except in derivative works like the Katha Sarit Sagar, which we have also covered before on the show. And the Brihat Katha also exists in my mind. Like I said before, I have complete knowledge of the past, present and future. And I can also travel back in time. So for me, it's as easy as traveling back in time, a few millennia, and just reading the original manuscript. Specifically, in next week's story, we'll see why it's a bad idea to jump into a tub full of tomatoes. We'll also see an early variation of a Trojan horse that is actually an elephant. If you have comments or suggestions, or if there are particular stories that you would like to hear, please do let me know by leaving a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at SFI Podcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. A big thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support and your feedback. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.